Hi everybody, it is time to do one of my favorite videos that I do every single month, where I talk about the books that are coming out in the next 30 days. I cannot wait to tell you about some of the titles coming out in November 2019, so we better get started. Welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. It is super exciting up here in Northern California because it is finally getting cold enough to wear sweaters, which is one of my absolute favorite times of the year. I go through, I take all my sweaters out of the closet, I get them all washed, all set up, and then I just go through them one after the other and wear them continuously, probably for the next three months. And I love it. So I'm super excited about that. I hope that all of you are in uh, your warm and cozy clothes. Unless you're in part of the world that is warm and hot, please don't get in a sweater. Um, but I am here to do one of my favorite videos where I tell you, about, tell you about some of the amazing books that are coming out in 2019, November. Now, let's start with what I always caveat this video. These are not all of the books coming out in 2019 in November because I cannot possibly do that video. These are just some of the ones that have been sent to me that I am so excited about that I cannot wait to tell you guys all about. Um, and I still have to do my shopping in November too and I need to pick up books just like you guys do. And also sometimes I ask for things, they don't come and that's just my incentive to go book shopping because I like to go book shopping. You guys know I like to go book shopping. So as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads. However you keep track of your TBR, please do so. If you are so able, please pre-order these books or order them from your local independent bookstore or have your library pre-order them for you or order them so you can get your hands on them as soon as possible. However, we are going to start this video actually with three books that are already out because of of a, a myriad of reasons why they didn't make it into another video. Um, and the first is because the publisher, the US publisher for one of the books, moved up their release date. The book was originally supposed to be released at the end of November, beginning of December, I believe. And then it won this tiny little award that you may have heard of called The Booker. And so The Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo has now been released, pre-released in the United States earlier than it was expected and it is out from Black Cat which is a imprint over at Grove and it is a beautiful paperback it is a, it is just great I was very lucky to have my friend Kyle bring me back this beautiful UK hardback edition. He happened to be in London right after the book award Booker awards were announced and I just sort of sent him a little message. Hey, if you happen to walk by a bookstore, a Waterstones or something over there in the UK and see this book on the shelf, I would love for you to bring me back a copy. I love how they print the Booker sticker right on it and it has the Booker winner. Oh, I just thought it was so beautiful. And so he did very kindly bring me back Girl, Woman, Other and I am so happy he did. I'm actually about a quarter of a way into this and it is brilliant. Now, I'm going to do a full review on this video, on this book, when I get done reading it, but this is the story of a group of women, black women, in the UK. And it sort of goes through a, a, a bunch of different types of women doing a bunch of different types of things. That sounds as vague as it possibly can, because I think part of the experience of this book is each section is told from the point of view of a different woman in a different space in life. And as you finish that section, you start another section that sort of introduced is told by a character that was introduced in the previous section. And you sort of are going down, you're sort of seeing how all of these people connect, all of these women connect in some way, but have very different lives, very different experiences at times, but all in a way have a universal sort of connection to the, um, I don't know, there's just such beauty in this book. I don't even know how to explain it. Now, it is very stylistically different. It's sort of told like a big, long prose poem. Um, there's no periods, and it, all the capitalization is actually done only on proper nouns, um, which is very interesting. Um, it took me a minute, but I have now found it to just, it's sort of, it's like 
when you're sitting at the beach and the waves sort of just lap over you and they sort of just calmly take you along onto a, that's exactly what this book does as i start to sort of flow through the language it just pulls me in the characters are amazing i could rave about this book this is just to tell you it is out in the us it is out in the uk you can get your copy go get your copy please support bernadine Arvaristo. she is brilliant and this is girl woman other this is out in the uk from hamish hamilton and it is out in the us from black cat which is a imprint over at grove get your hands on it guys i you promise you will not be disappointed okay the next book was sent to me at the very end of October, and it came out at the very end of October, and the reason was the publisher was kind enough to send me a finished copy. And it is actually a book I am super excited to read, and that is The Factory by Hiroko Oyamada. And it's funny because for some reason I always want to say her last name with a Spanish accent. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I took Spanish for years and years and years and years. My mom speaks Spanish. Maybe that's why, but I don't know. It is translated from the Japanese by David Boyd, and it is out now from New Directions. What a cute little book. It is so cute. This is the story of three people that work in a factory. They have very three very, very specific jobs they do. And what happens when those jobs sort of overtake their entire existence? Let me just read you the back because it, it just puts it so beautifully. But their lives slowly become governed by their work. Days take on a strange logic and momentum, and little by little, the margins of reality seem to be dissolving. Where does the factory end and the rest of the world begin? What's going on with the strange animals here? And after a while, it could be weeks or years, the three workers struggle to answer the most basic question, what am I doing here? For me, this idea of where does the real world end and work en work end and the real world begin is fascinating because there are sometimes I feel like all I do is exist within my workspace. So I'm super excited for this book. So that is The Factory by Hiroko Oyamada, and this is translated from the Dap Japanese by David Boyd and out from New Directions, and you can get your beautiful finished copy. Please support your little independent publishers. They do such great work. They are so, so kind to me. And I really think they put out amazing, amazing titles. One book that I should have talked about at the end of last month, and I misfiled it in my system. Um, I file all of my ARCs by release month, but for some reason, sometimes at the very end, something winds up in the wrong month. And Future Tense Fiction, Stories of Tomorrow, by out by Unnamed Press, wound up in November and it should have been at the end of October. So I'm super sorry, but you can get your hands on this right now. Now, this is a collection of short stories that focuses on the idea of how technology is changing the world and what that will mean and look like in the future. This book has stories in it by Charlie Jean Anderson. Um, Carmen Marie Machado, Emily St. John, uh, Mandel is in here, Nettie Okafor is in here, uh, DJ Bryce, Olokotun, and I'm sorry, D, uh, DG, I'm saying your name wrong, but he wrote a really, really good um, duology, a science fiction duology, which was also released by Unnamed Press called, the first one I think is called Nigerians in Space. Um, it's been a while since I read them, but I remember really, really loving them. So that fascinates me. I think this cover is absolutely fabulous. And so that's Future Tense Fiction Stories of Tomorrow, and this is out now from Unnamed Press. Please get your hands on it because I think a lot of you guys would love this and the idea behind this. Okay, now we're on to November 5th. I sort of need to say that everything seems to be coming out on November 5th that I have in my pile. I only have one book that isn't and it's coming out on November 12th. So it's not that far. I think it's because of the holiday. I really am sure of it. But November 5th, all of these books are coming out. So get ready to splurge on yourself because so many amazing books. Okay, the first book that I'm going to tell you about is in competition for my favorite read of 2019, and that is The Revisionaries by Margaret Wilkerson Sexton. This is coming out from Counterpoint Press. I am so excited. I'm going to go see her. I'm making a point to go see her on October, I'm sorry, November, I want to say 17th, um, in Oakland. Don't quote me on that, but I'm going to a bookstore in Oakland. Check out her on Twitter. Find out where it is. If you are local to the area, please come with me. It is an adorable bookstore. It's where I saw Stephen Rowley for the editor, and it is a fantastic store. 
And of course, I'm blanking on the name because that's who I am as a person right now. The Revisionaries is Margaret Wilkerson Sexton's second novel. Her first novel, A Kind of Freedom, was brilliant in itself, and I think this one is even better. This is told from the point of view of two women. We have um, two, well, we have three time periods here. We have modern time periods where we have Ava. Ava is a single mother. Um, of a teenage boy who has hit some hard times and has decided she is of mixed race and she has decided to move in with her elderly older white grandmother who she does not really know very well but is fairly wealthy and has sort of offered to take care of Ava pay her if Ava will sort of be her caretaker at this point in her life the other point of view is from Ava's um, maternal grandmother and I, Josephine and Josephine has two sections one is at the end of the 1800s when her and her family are going to be fleeing the plantation where they are slaves her mother her father and herself and they are going to be fleeing the plantation and then we also have her point of view from 1924 I think where she is her husband is passed and she is the sole, sole owner of a bunch of land that she um, rents out to a bunch of different people who do farming work around her and we find that she has a new neighbor who has moved in across the way, a young white woman and her husband, and sort of the implications in 1924 of what that relationship turns into. The book really focuses on this idea of race through time and sort of you get to see different aspects of how um, these women deal with race progressively throughout these time periods. It also has a lot to do with family. At points, it will break your freaking heart. Um, uh, Margaret is an amazing, amazing writer. She just has a way with sort of the poetic language. Um, this book, to me, is just about perfect. So that's The Revisionaries, out from Counterpoint, November 5th, by Margaret Wilkerson Sexton. Get your hands on it, read it, email me about it. It's so good. And I'm about to go from one amazing book to another amazing book. A bit of nonfiction was already in my five nonfiction November uh, picks for you guys. But the memoir In the Dream House by Carmen Marie Machado comes out from Grey Wolf Press on the 5th as well. And oh my goodness, is this book so, so good. This is Carmen Marie Machado's um, memoir as she deals with a, an abusive relationship that she had with a woman really her first relationship with a woman that lasted a long period of time and what she has set up is this metaphor this house that they were going to sort of build their life in which had this dream of this perfect relationship and sort of how that all awfully goes astray um she is a writer with a fierce sense of self and has such a way of creating language that just pierces you down to the heart. One of the really interesting things that she does in this book that I think is fascinating is when she's talking about the mental abuse that this woman uh, uh, forced on her, um, she switches herself to the second person. And in doing so, she is almost stick taken a step back from the, the abuse because it's still too sort of there for her. This book is so good, you guys. Please go buy it. Please read it. It is, again, so competing for one of my favorite reads of 2010. And yeah, it's so good. In the Dream House by Carmen Marie Machado, out November 5th from Grey Wolf Press. If I don't start talking faster, this video is going to be 100 minutes long. One book that was in my most anticipated, actually, reads of 2019 was Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. Kevin Wilson wrote The Family Thing, which I absolutely, absolutely loved. And this is the story of Lillian and Madison, who are roommates and they are friends in uh, college and a boarding school, I believe, actually. And later on in life, Madison has these twin stepkids that she asks Lillian to come and take care of because they are quite a handful. She asks for her assistance. And one of the things that she says that is sort of out there is that these kids will spontaneously combust at times. That is really all I know about this book. That is all I need to know. Kevin Wilson is a hilarious, satirical, funny, dark humor type of writer. And I met him at Book Expo America and he was just so nice. So that is nothing to see here out from Echo uh, by Kevin Wilson. Get your hands on this. I believe it comes out November 5th as well. Okay.
Next is a nonfiction book out from Catapult, which I have also talked about already, and that is The Crying Book by Heather Crystal. And this is actually sort of a meditation on crying in the human culture. It talks about the science of crying and the reasons we cry, but it also is sort of a memoir as um, Heather deals with some of the tragedy and some of the difficult times in her life that sort of have left, let, lent, let her cry and how she has used that um, to get through the situation. This book is written in little sort of I don't know what to say. I want to say like little poetic bursts, um, which I really, really uh, appreciate. I actually started reading this one already, um, but I'm just going to read you a quick bit. I suppose some people can weep softly and become more beautiful, but after a real cry, most people are hideous, as if they've grown a spare and diseased face, face beneath the one you know, leaving very little room for the eyes, or they look as if they've been beaten. We look, I look. Once in fifth grade, I cried at school for a reason I cannot recall, and afterward, a popular boy, rat tail, scaled skateboard, told me I looked like a druggie, and I was so pleased to be seen, I made him repeat it. Brilliant. The Crying Book by Heather Crystal out on November 5th from Catapult. So excited for this one. So excited for the next one as well, because Natasha Nagan's sequel to Girls of Fire, Paper and Fire Girls of Storm and Shadow is coming out on November 5th. This is actually my next read. It is up in my TBR because I have been saving it for November because I loved the first book so, so much. So this is what I will be reading next. This is a world fantasy series um, told from the point of view of an Asian queer woman protagonist. There's a lot of queer representation. It's got a fantastic world building. I loved Girls of Paper and Fire. I loved it. I'm so excited for the sequel. And so that's Girls of Storm and Fire by Natasha Nagan. And this is out November 5th. It's up there. I, yeah, I should probably just put it aside because it's the next book I'm going to read. A book that I actually saw on my friend Britta Bowler's channel that um, she's excited that's coming out on November 5th is one that I've had on my shelf. And it is a slim, teeny, tiny thing. And I need to just read it. And that is Space Invaders by Nona Fernandez, translated from the Spanish by Natasha Wimmer. And this is also out from Grey Wolf Press. This is the story of a group of friends. Let me just remember. A group of friends in adulthood who are preoccupied by uneasy memories and visions of their classmate, Estrella Gonzalez. Jepson. In their dreams, they catch glimpses of Estrella's braids, hear echoes of her voice, and read old letters that eventually, mysteriously, stopped arriving. Soon it became clear that Estrella's father was a ranking government officer implicated in the crime, the violent crimes of the Pinoche regime. The question of what became of her after she left school haunts her erstwhile friends, who were old enough to sense the danger and tension that surrounded them, but were powerless to face it. That seems like a lot to cover in such a slim little book. But that is Space Invaders by Nona Fernandez, translated from the Spanish by Natasha Wimmer, out from Grey Wolf Press. Okay. Gosh, this video is going to be long, guys, because I have so many more books to tell you about, and they're all amazing. Um, Humiliation by Paulina Flores is a short story collection coming out from Catapult. This is translated from the Spanish, I believe, by Megan McDowell. Megha McDowell translated something else that I remember. Wasn't she long-listed? I think she was long-listed for the, long, uh, the Man Booker International Prize at one time. I apologize. I recognize her voice. I don't know enough about Paulina Flores other than I followed her on Instagram, and she is punk rock. She is awesome. I love what she posts. Humiliation is a collection of short stories that translated from Spanish, and it says, it presents us with a chili that's seldom seen in fiction. Port cities marked by poverty and brimming with plans of rebellion. Apartment buildings populated by dominant mothers and voyeuristic neighbors. Library steps that lead students to literature, but also into encounters with other arts. Those of seduction, self-delusion, and sabotage. So yeah, I love actually the way the word humiliation looks on the front of this. Uh, so that is Humiliation by Paulina Flores out from Catapult. And it is translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. I have a lot of translated fiction in this stack. That just makes me so happy. Because we're onto a book translated from another language that I actually don't know if I've read any books translated from this language. And that's like the Icelandic book that I read last month. This is The Colonel's Wife by Rosa Lixum, translated from the Finnish by Lola Rogers. What a fun cover. 
This book sounds dark. The main protagonist of this book is an older woman who is reflecting on her time in Finland as a member of the extreme right Nazi movement during World War II. The way it says here, at once complicit and hideous, sexually liberated and sympathetic to the darkest of ideological movements, the narrator describes her childhood as the daughter of right-wing Finns before World War II and the way she became involved with, the, uh, with and eventually married the much older colonel. As both the marriage and the war turn increasingly destructive, Lixum renders the mind of an extremist in a pro style that is striking in its paradoxical beauty. I read about this book and I thought it sounded amazing. So I cannot wait to get to it. And that cover is pretty, really awesome, actually. The Colonel's Wife by Rosa Lixum, translated from the Finnish by Lola Rogers, out from Grey Wolf Press as well. Gosh, they're doing me good over there at Grey Wolf Press. I just love them so much. Okay, so an, an author that needs no introduction, but I don't know if you guys knew that this, I think this is his first adult fiction. I, that Don't quote me on that, I don't know. But I've read mostly his young adult fiction, and that is Daniel Jose Older's The Book of Lost Saints. This is coming out from, what is, where is this coming out from? Imprint by New York. I don't know um, this uh, publisher at all. Oh, it's from Macmillan. It's an imprint over at Macmillan. Um, I have to say, I'm going to say this, and it's okay. I have such a dreamy crush on uh, Daniel Jose Older. Um, he is just so, so dreamy. <laughs> Whatever I see, whatever he does, I'm like, whew. Um, and I'm really excited about this book. So um, this says, Mar um, Mary Saul vanished during the Cuban Revolution, disappearing with hardly a trace. Now, shaped by the atrocities long forgotten, her tenacious spirit visits her nephew, Ramon, in a modern-day New Jersey. Her hope that her presence will prompt him to unearth their pa painful family history. Ramon launches a haphazard investigation into the story of his ancestors, unaware of the forces driving him on his search. Along the way, he falls in love, faces a run-in with a murderous gangster, and uncovers the lives of the lost saints who helped Marisol during her imprisonment. He is an amazing writer, so I'm super excited about this book. So that's The Book of Lost Saints by Daniel, Daniel Jose Older, out from Imprint from Macmillan, and it is out on November 5th. Stack of Books is getting huge right now. A book that absolutely needs no introduction, and you guys, if you are a fan of hers, already know that this is coming out. The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern, who wrote The Night Circus, which is such a cult favorite. So many love that book is coming out on November 5th. I think this book sounds fan-freaking-tastic, but it has so much hype, and you guys know how I am about hype. But this is about a graduate student in Vermont who finds a book that has a sort of like a book of uh, fairy tales, kind of, where he then starts to read it, and he finds actually a story about his own life in the book. And what happens is he finds a bunch of keys, like clues, that lead him to this masquerade party in New York, which lead him to a door, and it says, through a doorway to an ancient library hidden far below the surface of the earth. What Zachary finds in this curious place is more than just a buried home for books and their guardians. It is a place of lost cities and seas, lovers who pass notes under doors and across time, and of stories whispered by the dead. Now, that sounds fantastic. Um, I may wait a little bit just because this book has so much hype. But I do know that Bookshop Santa Cruz is having a masquerade party, dress-up party for the launch of this book for us. I don't know. I'm on the fence. But if you are into that thing and you love her, you should definitely go. And so that's The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. And it is out right on November 5th, which is tomorrow. It's tomorrow. I should say it's right now because it practically is. The last book I have in this video is long. It's coming out November 12th. And that is from Amazon Crossing, which is Amazon Publishing's um, imprint that handles books in translation. And that is Mama... Ha, he says Mice by Saad Alsan Ausi, uh, translated from the Arabic by Sawad Hussein, 
and this book is actually set in Kuwait, which as I was thinking about it, I don't think I've ever read a book set in Kuwait. So I'm really actually, I'm quite excited to read this book. Um, and he is a very well established author in Kuwait. He has won a number of literary prizes. So this is the story of three friends who live in a section of Kuwait who, um, it says here, share neither ethnic origin nor religious denomination. Only friendship and a rage against the unconscionable sectarian divide turning their lives into a war zone rubble. To lay bare the ugly truths, they form and protect a protest group called Fuad's Kids. Their religious uh, sorry, their righteous transgressions have made them targets of both Sunni and Shia extremists. They've also elicited the concern of Fuad's grandmother, Mama Hisa, a story-spinning font of piety wisdom, superstition, and dire warnings who cautions them that should they anger God, the sky will surely fall. I think that actually sounds really excellent. I did not request this book and I'm so excited that Amazon Crossing sent it to me. So that is Mama He Says Mice by Saad Al Alsan Ausi, translated from the Arabic by Sawad Hussein. Um, what's really cool about Amazon Publishing is that they actually publish the hardback and the paperback at the same time. So depending on what you're more comfortable with, you can pick up which one you are um, into there. So I'm not going to try to put those all in a big stack right here because to be honest, it's too many books. But as always, I really hope all of these books wound up on your TBR, that they all sound fantastic to you. As always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I could not do this without you. If you are new to my channel, thank you. I hope you subscribe and you come back for more. As always, as always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, happy reading. Bye!